Hello and welcome back everybody to Seduce Me. So, we're on the phone with Naomi and Suzu. And we're probably chatting about Sherlock. Yeah, after my grandpa died. And my father hit me. You know, the usual. What happens every day. Anyway... We all agreed that the actor playing the titular character certainly had a very distinctive look about him, with that long overcoat and scarf wrapped around his neck. I'm just saying one thing. If you want to see a good Sherlock Holmes series, watch the version with Jeremy Brett as Sherlock Holmes. Jeremy Brett, best Sherlock Holmes ever. Full stop. We had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. Girlish laughter. Yeah, he has really his cheekbones. Uh, he has really high cheekbones. And his eyes are pretty. Though, I do have to say I prefer Jetson. <laughs> and as a bonus, this actor is just too sassy. Oh, so sassy. God damn it, can't even read. I looked at the clock hanging on the wall and realized how late it was. Whoa, it's already 1 a.m. Sorry for keeping you guys up so late. I think I'm gonna hit the hay for tonight. See you guys at school tomorrow. I wonder when we are going to meet the boys. Probably soon. I should probably ans shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stayed up this late just to talk to my friends. But it was really nice. Well, to the bathroom I go. I took a relaxing shower. Nothing beats hot water and the feeling of being clean. After drying myself, I promptly dressed in my pajamas and crawled into bed. Ah, a nice hot shower after a long day. I'm so glad to finally be in bed. It had been a really long day. I knew that I was wishing for something to change back in class. Something to change back in class, but I... Okay, but I certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that had, had that happened today. Ah, oh God, I knew that I was wishing for something to change back in class. Uh-huh, okay. In the past, she wished for that. I thought she's like wishing that something changes tomorrow in, back in class. Like tomorrow something happens and she is again in the past or something like that. But I certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that had happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Ah... I curled up on my side and tightly wrapped the blankets around me. I really wasn't in the mood to be returning to school, but my dad probably would make me go just for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I reached out to the lamp on my nightstand to turn off the lights. However, my mind was so lost in the passing of my grandfather and the thought of inheriting something so big that it haunted my mind the entire night until the next morning. Ah... Uh, I shook my head to try to clear the sleepiness out of me, to no avail. I really didn't get any sleep last night. It's really already time to wake up. Wait, school. As soon as I realized I had to go to school, I slid out of bed and looked at the vanity mirror. That's a relief. Luckily, there was barely a bruise on my cheek. You had to squint to actually see it. I doubted anyone would actually notice it unless they leaned in really close. Breathing out a sigh, I got dressed, took my backpack, and caught the bus to go to school. It wasn't even hours before everyone heard of the news. I was approached in school and given condolences for my loss. However, that wasn't what shocked my friends. Wait, so you have the whole Anderson house to yourself? Lucky as hell, man! Wow. You are an insensitive person. <clears throat> Quit being so sensitive, Naomi. Quit being so vulgar, Suzu. Suzu's right, Naomi. Naomi's right, Suzu. Nah, I gotta be honest with you. Even though she's kind of smartass, that's not okay. Oh, man, come on. See, she knows about proper public taste. I know how to be a lady. Sheesh. It's not about being a lady. It's about being an asshole. Like, this has nothing to do with gender. Guys, I'm going I'm going there after school, today, because my parents want me to get used to living there. Seriously? 
It hasn't even been a day since you came back to school. That's a good point, but my father is just as crazy as you. I know, but my parents want me to try living there as soon as possible. Still, that's really fast. Are you going to be okay? Probably not. Of course. Haha. <laughs> but even in the comfort of my best friends, life seemed to keep testing me. Oof! Hey! Don't go around shoving people like that. Whoops. Did I strike a nerve, Capini? Oh, that is a very Italian name. Or at, le at least it sounds like one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty, like, wow. Like, the naked stomach and all. I mean... Couldn't you have made it more obvious that she's the bad girl in this story? <laughs> She let out a small laugh as she twirled her hair around her finger. Lisette, or Lisette, I don't really remember how they said that. I say Lisette. One of the last people I wanted to see today. It's not me you should be apologizing to. Oh, Anderson. Hey, how's it going? I'm alright. Uh, haven't you already heard Lisette? Lisette, okay. Then I'll say it like that too. Of what? Her grandfather's passing. Ah, well, I'm sorry about that. I don't really watch a lot of news. It doesn't really sound like you mean it. I do mean it. Earnestly. Why wouldn't I? Typical Capini. Isn't her family involved with the Mafia or something? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if she brought out the bat from behind her back right this moment. Holy moly, what is going on in this school? <laughs> I had nearly forgotten the crowd that followed Lisette, which was mostly comprised of people that no one wanted to see on a typical school day. No one had the slightest idea why exactly they followed Lisette around persistently, but they labeled themselves as social equals with her. That is out of line! Suzu comes from an honest family, says the one whose family profits from political scandals. Yeah, your dad doesn't make anything unless he's in the courts with dirty politicians. Is everything, uh, everybody like here famous? Like the one is a lawyer for politicians apparently? The other owns a toy company? Okay, I mean Suzu apparently just is involved in the mafia, so that's... Well, on the other hand, how deep she, uh, depending on how deep she is involved, maybe her grandpa is the mafia boss. <laughs> well, of course she isn't a mafia, uh, she isn't involved with the mafia stuff, but you know, get, you get what I think. Hey, let's all calm down for a second, all right? I'm sure Anderson needs some time to recuperate. I mean, what just happened? We need to give her some respect. Do you mean that, or are you going to screw me right now? Just stop. Stop acting like that already. Like you feel sorry for me. I mean, maybe you've got a point and she's like, just like acting, but still. Hmm? What are you talking about? I'm sure you're happy seeing me like this. You already have everything you've wanted and now seeing me like this, life couldn't get any better. Bitterness seeped into me and words started flying out of my mouth without filter. That happens when you don't let out your anger, children. That is why I always get angry at games. So I have later not to snap at normal life situations. <laughs> but honestly, I didn't care. I was so consumed by anger that I only saw Lisa Lisette in front of me. What exactly am I to you? Just another part of your obstacle course? Is that what I am? I am sick of it, Lisette. I am sick of all the charades. I am sick of you. Gra gasps rose from the crowd around her, and I was brought back to the school hallway. Even my friends beside me looked at me in surprise. One girl looked like she was going to speak up, but Lisette held her hand up to stop her. There was an emotion in her face that I couldn't quite make out, but I could see a form of pity in her eyes. No, don't you dare pity me! I looked away from her. I didn't want to see that emotion in her eyes when she was talking to me. She didn't have the right to look at me that way. I'm sorry. I know your grandfather passing away must have really taken a toll on your emotions. Yeah, she, uh, even though you're probably the antagonist and stuff and you're a bitch and all that good stuff, you know, you're kinda, you kinda have probably a point there. 
She stepped towards me and put her hand on my shoulder, giving me a tiny smile, as if for old time's sake. But for some reason, I didn't feel comforted at all. Not that I was just angry at her, but the expression on her face when she leaned in close to me contorted into something complex. Something was different about her. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but something about her had definitely changed. From when to when? What kind of time are you talking about? Well, I'll be going for now. Track meet responsibilities and all of that stuff. See you later. Well, gotta say, Estefania, now you're probably the... You're really the person who looks bad in that case. Gotta say. Something about Lisette made me feel uncomfortable. I wasn't just angry, but also uneasy. What was it? I had never seen her like that before. But I decided to pay no further attention to it. She continued running down the hallway with a gaggle of friends behind her. I refocused my attention to Mrs. Phillips, who was walking down the hallway to towards me. Is everything all right, girls? Nothing we couldn't handle, Mrs. P. Just a bunch of snobs. Snobs? <laughs> Sorry. Suzu, hush! It was nothing, Mrs. Phillips. I see. Well, Miss Anderson, please accept my condolences for your loss. Thank you, Mrs. Phillips. Your grandfather was a good man. He really upheld the philanthropy of his company's policies, and the money that went towards charity, too. I know. He was amazing. Well, he probably wasn't. At least not to his son. I, I, that is probably what uh, interests me the most, you know. I really want to know what happened between him and his grandpa. And I really want to know if my theory is correct. We'll see. I really looked up to him and I want to be as good as he was. Well, I know that you'll be as great as your grandfather. Hell yeah, she will. She'll be ten times better than her grandfather. Would I? Would I really be better than my grandfather? Everyone seemed to have high expectations for me. I wanted to do my best and make my family proud, but to be better than my grandfather? I wasn't sure about that. From outside the school window, I saw a familiar blue car pull up the curb. Undoubtedly, it was my father in the driver's seat. Oh, my ride is here. Well, I guess I'll see you both tomorrow. Want us to come with you? Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> I'll be fine. See you. Hey, Dad. Hey, honey. Oh, at least you feel a little bit bad. Well, at least you're still a human being, huh, Mr. Anderson? As I got into the car, I noticed my father looked troubled, clutching at his steering wheel and s staring straight ahead, as if something was really bothering him. About what happened yesterday. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Does your cheek still hurt? No, it's nothing to worry about. I mean it. I shouldn't have laid a finger on you. You know that you're my most precious daughter. You're all that I have. I... Yet he couldn't bring himself to say what he could never say to me for such a long time. I always wanted to hear those words to affirm how he, fe he really felt. But, I guess, even now, he couldn't say it to me. Ah, come on, he, he already did more than I expected from him. <laughs> also, rather than I love you, I would rather her, um, the story about him and his father. I turned my head away to look out of the window. There was no point in waiting for something that was never going to come. And like that, he started to drive, and the conversation between us ended. I decided to focus my attention on the passing scenery. We were taking the usual route to Grandfather's house. It was located within the vicinity of the school district, but it was still pretty far from the school and from where our house was. He had always lived alone. He insisted on doing things by himself, even at his age living in such a large house. I wondered, did he pass away with no one at his side as well? It sounded so lonely and sad. It was strange that he decided on living all alone in his large estate. If anything, he could have lived with us. By the way, did I, like, turn the music down, or why is there no music? Wait, let me check for a sec. Nope, there's just no music. Okie dokie. Uh, where was I? He could have lived with... I think I didn't read that. It was strange that he decided on living all alone in his large estate. If anything, he could have lived with us. 
though he and my father probably would have given each other the silent treatment the entire time. Maybe living alone was preferable to that. I actually hadn't visited, visited him for quite a while. Visits to his house were most frequent when I was a child, and I had grown up long since then. The last time I visited, though, I thought he looked just as usually, uh, just as he usually was, happy and healthy. But things changed. In the back of my mind, I knew that he would have had to leave one day. It wasn't like humans could live forever. So why did my heart still feel so heavy? Man, that's normal. Who isn't sad when their grandpa dies? The car ride was mostly spent in silence, until he spoke up again. How was school? Maintaining your grades, I hope. Um, yeah. I've been, I've been trying my best as of so far. Trying? That's not really doing the best you can, is it? With my father, only some words I said were filtered through his ears. It was difficult to keep up a conversation without eventually talking about academics or my future, even if it was something loosely based on it. He always found a way to inter inter integrate it whenever we talked. Anyway, your belongings are in the trunk. There isn't a lot, so I'm sure you can manage bringing them inside the house. After all, you are on the road to being independent now. Wow. 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 Well, uh, well, she really doesn't have much with her, but what kind of father is that? Really? Yes, I can manage on my own. I mean, of course, there are different kind of fathers, and I see, I, I mean, uh, if you have um, uh, a strict father, that isn't a bad thing. But this father isn't strict, he's an asshole, you know? He, he doesn't even carry the, the luggage of his daughter with his daughter into the house. Like, who would do that? You're independent, you gotta be independent now, so you better carry your own stuff. <laughs> I'm evil. The usual silence resumed between us. I really wasn't sure what to say around him, especially when most of the time we didn't share the same opinions. One question did linger in my mind, though. If he was going to justify acting so nonchalant at grandfather's funeral, I had the right to at least know why. Oh, On the one hand, I don't really think it's a good idea. Um, but on the other... You, you gotta know. We gotta know. Say, Dad, about you and Grandpa. We are not talking about this. I feel like we should be. Because Grandpa did leave us yesterday, so... I wouldn't care if he had left even long before that. I do not want to hear it, and that is the end of this conversation. As always, he managed to shut down any other form of conversation related to him. It was just like what happened last night. I opened my mouth slightly, but I closed it again. It was like talking to a brick wall. It wasn't like I could find out anything by somehow arguing my way through it. All right, then. I leaned against the car door and stared out the window. I really couldn't think. What would this place be like? I had been to my grandfather's house before, but it was one thing visiti visiting, and it was another thing actually living there. How would I manage living on my own without any training to really care for a house? I knew that naturally the bills would be paid by my parents, who inherited grandfather's stocks to the corporation. Ah, I see. Okay. That makes of course sense. But I had never lived independently before. Thinking about it made me feel like some kind of bird being pushed out of the nest. Though I was technically an adult, I felt unprepared and a bit daunted at the prospect of actually moving into a new place. Well, you know... Handling a mansion is pretty difficult. I mean, it's not only that you're living alone, it's also you have a huge house. <laughs> Most people my age would be ecstatic moving out. After all, it would symbolize some kind of change in their lives, like being on the road to independence. But I felt like it was nothing of the sort. I really hoped I wouldn't let my parents down. I wouldn't want to let my grandfather down. What would he be saying right now? I gazed up at the passing clouds in the sky. If you're out there, Grandfather, how would you be doing? Would there be anything you'd want to tell me at this moment? And of course, no answer. What was I doing? Searching for an answer in a heaven that would, that would or would not exist? 
I ducked my head to stare at the blur of trees and cars from the car window. My hat was definitely going into the clouds there at the moment. Either way, I found myself being driven off to my new home. The car rolled to a stop and I drifted out of my thoughts. Oh, yeah, I just remembered the fight in the beginning and the gun. Were that the father and the grandfather? But the well, that would be like some real heavy stuff. Jesus. Hopefully it's not like that. That is even a bit much. The car rolled to a stop and I drifted out of my thoughts. Here we are. Go on in. All right. Tell Mom I love her. Oh, you're giving her a, you're giving him a chance to say it. All right. I love you, Dad. Okay, now you are really trying hard. <laughs> no, make sure to come by and visit us often. No, I'm going to miss you lots. Nothing other than a blank stare. I mean, he looks sad. He just can't. On the other side, he's an asshole, so you have reasons to feel uh, hostile towards him. I paused a bit before reaching for the car door handle, waiting for any form of a goodbye. But he didn't speak again. I sighed and exited the car, hearing my dad pop open the trunk. I saw two large bags I packed last night that were large enough to carry only the things I needed. I took them out, placed one back on each shoulder, and closed the trunk. He then drove off. Okay, I mean, that's enough to carry yourself. Still, he's an asshole. Leaving me alone in front of the mansion. I watched the blue car fade into the distance of the road, before turning to see my new home. There it is! It's huge! My grandfather gave, thi gave me this? It's hard to believe. The house was framed by a set of tall gates, and I hesitantly pushed them aside to take in the entire estate. The house still looked like it was when I last visited him. At a glance it seemed kind of intimidating with its size, though if I came closer it was clear that there was more to it than that. The brick walls were framed by shrubbery and lovely flowers, giving it a homey and welcome look, but in contrast the tall doors into the house gave me a feeling of grandeur. Who knew what was waiting for me? But I wouldn't back down at this moment. I took out the key to the front doors and unlocked them. Well, might as well make myself at home. I'll be staying here for quite a while, anyways. That's when I saw them. Lying on the floor was a group of men. They all were, they were all unconscious, but there was no explanation as to why they were, they were there in the first place. I dropped my bags as I let the doors close on its own behind me. So the steam text for the game already mentioned that, so I'm not too surprised, just if you're wondering, why I'm not surprised that there are men lying around. Huh? Who the heck are these guys? Why are they here? What's going on? I probably would call the police in that moment, because I would think they are probably like... On the other hand, you probably should first check if they are okay. On the other hand, it's probably a trap of some thieves to put you in or something like that. I don't know. No way put you in, like uh, murdering you and stuff like that. Put in. Put in is like a police officer putting someone in jail, right? Right? I don't know. Some of them had open wounds. The blood was staining the floor and the sand was inter intermingling with the air. I couldn't help but feel bad for them instinctively, but nevertheless I was shocked and a bit angry at the sudden intrusion. My mind suddenly went from caring and concerned to confused and demanding answers. It's probably a mixture of that in a situation like that. Who are you guys? No response. I'll call the police. Still nothing. None of them seemed to be awake to answer or respond to me. It seemed surreal to have random strangers in the house I just moved into. But I wanted answers quickly. That was until... Oh, ah, okay, one stood up. I see. What the fuck? I was already... Huh? Eeeh! Get away from me! Woman, you're going to let me kiss you. No. I couldn't believe it myself. But within a mere blink of an eye, one of the men went from, flying on the, from lying on the floor to being right in front of my face. What was even more odd was the fact that I felt serene and calm about it. Really? Okay. 
Slowly a desire burned from my chest, telling me to accept his kiss, even when my mind vehemently refused. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Good. Mm. A strange turn of events now, is it? As he kissed me, I could feel my body go weak. I didn't know why, but that kiss was draining me out of my energy, and yet it was so good and met my heart, made my heart sing. It was a strange and tingling feeling that danced over every nerve on my body. You know, we really could use some music with that. I could feel streams of intangible energy run up my body into my lips. It felt only into your lips? It felt odd, but at the same time, it felt amazing. God damn it. Sam, stop it. Thank you. Mm? The person kissing me, Sam was his name, glanced behind him. I said stop. Now. Mm. Fine. Okay, that was stupid. Finally, he pulled back and I was left standing there in a daze. What? Huh? I couldn't tell what was going on. My mind was completely enwrapped by the kiss in my thoughts that melted into the depths of my forgotten memories. Please forgive my brother. He's a bit reckless. That has nothing to do with recklessness. Especially she gave in- Okay, you know, I know more about these people because of the Steam text, so I'm not going to continue what I was going to say. At least I feel a hell of a lot better than you right now. Because you used your abilities on her. Sam, you're such a reckless brute. Taking advantage of a beautiful young woman like her. Shut that pretty boy mouth of yours before I rip it off your pretty boy face. Oh, you're so hardcore. Your shirt is even ripped on the... Down end? How do you call that? Sheesh, you guys. Can we not fight right now? Not all of us are in the best state. Okay, I already see. The boy on the left is like the, the, oh no, <laughs> pretty boy. The, the second from the left is the, I'm so cool, pretty boy. Uh, the second from the right is the, I'm so serious, pretty boy. And the very last, well, the green one, you know, the, what, the first one from the right, uh, is the, I'm so hardcore, pretty boy. Hey, got you people already. I guess you are right, Matthew. I agree. Hmm. And who are you? Are you the I'm so normal, pretty boy? However, as the man got up and started to chat freely, my thoughts began to reassemble, and I remembered my confusion and anger once again, only now multiplied to tenfold. What? What? Huh? Did you say something beautiful? Oh, I swear, if I was her, I'd kick you in the balls right now. And I exploded. Yeah, it's a bit late. You know, I can't really scream around, but I'll do my best. What is going on? Why the hell are you all here in my house? Why are you all wounded? Why did you kiss me? Who are you guys? I couldn't help exploding, but after being taken advantage of and being left in a mush state... Well, you weren't really. I mean... As the other dude mentioned, he used to... Yeah, well, it's probably taking advantage of if he used powers to kiss her, you know? So it's still probably being taken advantage of. Hmm, you'll, you'll probably have a point, girl. Ah! My words escaped without filter. I definitely scared the man around me. Even the man who kissed me. Oh, and we're already 30 minutes. Wow. So. That was kind of random and stupid. But, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a start, you know, it's a start. And, you know, obviously they have some kind of magical powers to obviously seduce women. I guess you people can do the maths why all this happened. So I guess, uh, we'll forgive the game for now and keep cool about that. I was uh, I was told by um, by by the person who recommended to me this game that it is really good despite uh, the premise that we just met being a little bit awkward and stupid, you know. So uh, I'll trust that person and we'll uh, uh, we'll um, we'll give the game a break, and next time we'll see 
if I give this game a break for a reason right now. <laughs> so, thank you everybody for watching. Come back for the next part and see what this game, the main plot of the game, actually has to offer. And uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.